Um, so as Zane mentioned, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about writing your own pixel script and uh, kind of like why you'd want to do that and how to write an easy one. So this should be pretty quick. So basically to back up a little bit, uh, pixel scripts are the API for working with data in Pixie. Um, pixel scripts can be executed by the Pixie platform um, through the UI, the CLI, and uh, coming soon, we're actually going to have an API and client libraries to run pixel scripts. Um, and so um, pixel comes with a lot of built in scripts to query the data that we automatically collect in your system. Um, Actually, is this text too small? Can people see it? It's probably better if you make it a little bit bigger, Natalie. Okay, okay. Is that better? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so like I just ran PX script list in the CLI and you can see all the different scripts that are built into Pixie that you can run. Um, you can also use Pixel to actually extend the, <clears throat> extend the Pixie platform to query new data that isn't automatically collected. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna focus on querying existing data. Um, so before we get into a custom script, let's run a built-in script really fast. So this is one for HTTP data. We're running it on um, the particular cluster ID that um, you know we're interested in. And we're running this PX live command, which is basically an interactive CLI. Um, and so we can see here that uh, the, you know, CLI is showing the HTTP data that Pixie's like automatically collected for me in this format. And if we do a keyboard shortcut, we can see the script that actually backs that. Um, and I will go through the syntax and the language a little bit now. So in terms of the use case, like why am I writing a script? So imagine that in your Kubernetes cluster, you're really interested in analyzing um, the volume of traffic coming in and out of each pod, like the total bytes received by that pod over the network and the total bytes sent by that pod over the network, because you're interested in knowing if that traffic is spread evenly across pods for your various services. So that's the little mini use case that we're working with today. Um, so the kind of prereqs, I've installed Pixie in my cluster and that is what I'm trying to analyze. So every pixel script basically begins with this line and I'm gonna set the syntax to Python because the pixel language is actually um, built to be valid Python and uh, we also built it to follow the pandas API because we didn't really want to invent a brand new query language. We wanted to build on something that people were already familiar with, already had a community. So um, that's why we made those decisions. So when I do import PX, what I'm doing is I'm saying import the module that I can use to query my Pixie data. Um, we'll build up this script over time, but the next thing that we'll do is we'll instantiate our first data frame. So data frame is uh, Pixie, Pandas, and also project like Spark's way of representing tables. And so you can think of it as just like a table with rows and columns. So we'll say df equals px.dataframe. And we'll ask specifically for the constats table. So you can look in our docs, the various tables that we have, but I can just tell you that the constats table tracks various uh, statistics about the traffic in and out of, uh, you know, in and out of your cluster. And we want to give it a start time of one minute ago to now. And uh, we'll actually manipulate this table, but I like to build stuff up more incrementally. So let's do our equivalent of a console log or a print line and do px.displayDF. And so what this is gonna do is output this table that I've initialized on line three. So if we run that, we're gonna do the same PX live command, but we're gonna do dash F for file and tutorial.pixel, which is the file that I have. And we can see that um, 
it has worked. Um, I have written a script on the fly, but uh, this data is like very low level. It's like a low level time series of connections opening and closing to particular addresses. So we're gonna have to do some work to aggregate this information. And we're also gonna need to make this data in terms of pods, because that's the unit that I'm interested in analyzing. So in order to do that, um, every data frame in Pixie has an attribute called context, which you can use to pull out things like the service that the record was collected on, the pod that it was collected on, the host name, basically just pull out important metadata about the data. So we're going to get a pod column by doing df.context ctx and access the pod attribute. Then we mentioned that we actually wanted to aggregate all this data to be one row per pod of the traffic coming in and out in terms of bytes. So what we want to do is do an aggregate in pixel. So we're going to say df equals df dot group by because we want to group by the pod column and we want to aggregate the byte sent. This is our output column and the input to it is the byte sent column and we're going to run px.sum on it, which is our function that sums up values. And we want to also do bytes received, which is basically the same thing. And um, all of this stuff is documented in our doc. So it's okay if you're not like memorizing the exact syntax right now. I'm just trying to kind of walk you through like how you would do this kind of script. So I have my group by, I have my pod, I have my aggregate. So let's rerun this one and see if it's closer to what we're looking for. Okay, great. So what we can see is that for all of the pods in my cluster, I see the bytes that they've sent out and the bytes that they've received. And, um, you know, nicely, like the uh, language has actually figured out that these are bytes. So it's showing me units. I can sort and see, you know, which ones have the most. And wow, I mean, as we might expect, Elastic is consuming and sending quite a lot of data. I'm seeing 7.7 .7 terabytes in there. Uh, so that might be worth looking into. But um, one more thing that I want to do here is actually pull out the service that these pods are part of so I can make sure I'm looking per service if the traffic is spread evenly. So I'm just going to make a couple more edits. So just like we pulled out pod, let's pull out service. And we're going to also group by service as well. And since I noticed that there was a problem with Elastic potentially, like maybe it's normal, but I just want to look into it more to see that volume of the traffic. Let's filter it down to a particular namespace. So I'll show you how to do a filter and this will be uh, kind of the last syntax that we cover in this tutorial. So we'll say df equals df. And in order to do a filter, what you do is you just put a Boolean expression in brackets here. So I could say true for all I care and it would be a valid filter. But in this case, what we're interested in doing is taking the namespace and filtering out the namespace equals the one we're interested in, which is PLC. So I happen to know there is a function in pixel that does pod name to namespace. We're going to pass in df.pod and we're going to say equals PLC. So what this will give us is only pods that um, that are from the PLC namespace. So we'll run that. Okay, great. So what we can see is that now we have the service and we know that all of these are from the particular PLC namespace. So we can see, for example, that for this cloud proxy service, um, that we have you know, 3.4 gigabytes into one pod, 2.7 to the other. That's probably pretty close, but are, are sent by that pod, but then we have maybe double in compared to out. So like maybe that's worth looking into, but other ones are looking a little bit more even like the API service. And so like, this is actually a script I can keep around and reuse if I ever want to investigate this type of question in the future. Um, 
I'll just show you one more thing, which is the kind of like portability of these scripts. So we're gonna go to the Pixie UI and we're gonna open the scratch pad, which is a place you can put a new script and open the editor here and run the script. And we can see the same data in the UI that we just saw in the CLI. So we have a lot of great scripts already, but I think that we've really just scratched the surface in terms of what we can do with pixel scripts. So we would love to see the scripts that you write and the scripts that you think would be useful to other people in the community. So uh, if Sean, after this, will be sending out in his email like, a link to the tutorial for how to push pixel scripts to GitHub if you're interested in, in doing that. And we would love to see your scripts and uh, let me know if you have any questions.